you're wearing headphones, this is your warning. Three, two, one. Whoa! Orcs are back, baby. Let's talk about this book. Hey guys, so I'm back um, with the new book. So thanks as always to our subscribers. If you like our content, please like, share, and subscribe down below. And another huge thank you to our sponsors over at Red Dragon. Without them, I would not have this book in my hand bringing it to you. So uh, their link is down in the description below as well. All right, let's hit the table. And here we are. So we got the uh, we got the codex over here on the table. We're gonna crack this open for you guys. Uh, I'm not gonna make you wait any longer. So we got Screaming Faces. And then we're actually going to cut through most of this. I'm, I'm still going to flip through it, obviously, but uh, I won't pause on any of the actual fluff because either you know it and that's why you have the book or you're going to get the book and you're going to read it yourself. Um, so just flip through it here. Uh, we have we do have the section on the Beast Snaggas. Um, they got their own little bit mention. Same with Speed Freaks or um, like more mech or eccentric orcs. Just a brief intro on the tribes, the clans, how how basically orc armies work. Some nice artwork there. Um, this this is an older piece, but you got bad moons fighting uh, blood angels, and then gets into the actual unit description. So Gazkal uh, updated with his new to reflect his new model, um, and with the new lore that came with prophecy of the wolf, and then the goths, boss Zagstruck. So all the all the characters are tied in with their own um, clan. Uh, Evil Suns, Bad Moons, we didn't get Nazdrag in this book, that's a shame, uh, but you can always still make your own, right? Uh, Blood Axe Clan with Snickrot, Death Skulls with Grotsnick, Snake Bites, who never had anyone until now. So, Mazrog Scragbad on uh, Free Willy there, his Great White Squig, and Zograd Wartsnaga, the Runt Boss for Hire. So just stuff on them, Freebooters, Bad Ruck. Same old, same old. Uh, getting into the, the the catalog, I like to call it. It just basically showcases the minis painted up by the heavy metal team, which are stunning. And uh, you can try to emulate this. You can go your own way with it or do a mix of the both, right? You got your glyphs for each clan. Uh, some battle scenes. Some of the new beast snag is fighting some Cadians, and that's going to be a really bad time for them. Uh... We have more your Dreadwa, your Speedwa, your Flyboys. And then Gazcall with all his mates. And then here's another foldout. This is a battle scene. Um, probably most of the, the Games Workshop or collection that's painted uh, on display for you here. And the Stompas are actually all individual Stompas. They aren't just the same cut and paste same Stompa. They actually do have five studio Stompas, which that's nice to see. And now we're here, we're in the rules. So we're gonna go through as much of this as we can, uh, cause I know not everyone has the book right now and we all wanna, we all wanna see how the orcs are standing uh, in comparison to some of the latest books that came out <coughs> at Mech. Um, so first off we got the, the combat patrol. Now there was some stipulation, people were online saying, oh, there's no way that can be the combat patrol box. That's too much value. Like it's, that's like one of the best ones yet. Although it says right here, um, the created from the context contents of the Orc Combat Patrol box set, so it looks like you do get twenty of the new boys, the new Mega Armored Boss, the new Def Coptas, and a Def Dread, and you can never have too many Def Dreads. Just with the options they have, you don't even need to magnetize them; just have have all of them. That's what I do. Um, and the detachment abilities, so. We'll actually start paying attention here. We got um, clan units excluding Gretchen, so they don't even get the clan keyword anymore, uh, or they don't even get a clan culture anymore, um, but before they did, uh, but they just didn't get the bonus from it. Um, so troop units excluding Gretchen units, again, they gain OBSEC. Grotz lost OBSEC. That's a huge blow to them, considering they didn't even drop any points. Um, they did go up in toughness, sure. They're still only strength two, and they're still... They're still the same points they were for a non-obsec unit with garbage leadership. There, there's a few niche things you can do with them, but they aren't. 
I'm sorry for all the guys who were raring to have their full grot armies um, use the guard book, maybe. <laughs> Just proxy grots. I mean, that's that's all I can tell you. Um, so specialist lads. Now, the following units can be included in an orc detachment without pre- preventing that detachment from getting its clan buff. However, they won't get theirs. So before that used to just be Gazkull. But now it's Gazkull, it's Bad Ruck, it's Makari, Grotsnick, New Zograd, Wartsnag, uh, and specialist mob units. We'll touch on specialist mob units later. They've also changed quite a bit from their uh, um, Saga of the Beast incarnation. Uh, I'm the boss. Love this rule. Um, I, I, I do. I really love it. Uh, so you can only take some maximum of one war boss or death killer war trike model in each detachment. So one boss per detachment, he's not going to be sharing his detachment with another boss. They'd, they'd fight it out beforehand and the winner would be the one leading your army. That's how it works. That's how it works. Do it. Uh, and then we got the name characters and kill rigs, uh, with their warlord traits. So they have set warlord traits. Um, if you make them your warlord, they have to take that one. And the kill rig got that because there were some shenanigans you could have pulled with the kill rig um, by giving it certain warlord traits. So they've actually had the foresight to get that out of the way. Um, And a bunch of these are unique to their clan, but not all of them are. Uh, So you'll see here, um, Zogwad Wartsnaga has Beast Gob, which isn't the Snake Bite's unique warlord trait. It's it's a Beast Snaggy unique warlord trait, but just as an example, right? So... Just food for thought there. Don't think you're going to be making your kill rig your warlord and giving them a four up and feel no pain or whatever that that one warlord trait is. It's not going to happen, boys. Sorry. Uh, and then we get into the clans. Um, so they've also changed how clans work in that you have your warlord and whatever clan he's part of, you can only take the relic. Like you can't. Like you can't say have a Goff's patrol and an evil son's patrol and have Gaz as your warlord being a Goff and then take the evil son's relic. He, you have to take the, uh, the stuff that's specific to the same clan as your warlord. So it, it it's, you can definitely still mix your detachments, but it prevents some of that min maxing, which is only good for, for orc players. It's just, it's avoiding a nerf in the future guys. So I know people were kind of iffy about it, but it's all explained here in the examples as well. Um, so we'll get right into the actual clans and they all have changed quite a bit. Um, mostly for the better. Uh, so we'll get, we'll go into goths, no mucking about my personal favorite. They're no nonsense. So each time a model with this culture makes melee attack, unmodified hit roll of six scores an additional hit. You don't roll another attack. It's just another hit exploding hits better. And then Sure, we lost Scarboys, but now it's baked into every single one of our units if they charge or heroically intervene, plus one strength. That's fantastic. You're not wasting your command points pre-game, and it affects things like Mega Knobs. It affects things like Gazcall. It affects all that stuff. So, and it is, do note that it is add one of the strength characteristic of the attack. So you're not going to make your war boss strength 7, and then his power claw makes him strength 14. It's going to be, he's strength six, his power claw makes him strength 12, and then that makes him strength 13. So do, do, it's not going to give you, oh, two up to wound a predator or something like that. So it will, just make sure you read it, right? Um, Warlord trait proper killy, add one to their attack characteristic, and when they make a melee attack, improve the armor penetration characteristic by one. Again, no nonsense, no mucking about, it just makes them killier. Uh, Unbridled Carnage. This is fantastic. Everyone loved more Daka in the last edition because it gave you Daka, Daka, Daka on fives, exploding shots on fives. Goffs get exploding hits on fives in melee. So two CP for a core character unit and no mucking about procs on a five or plus instead of a six. (laughs) And now the choppas are uh, minus one. Now you have your plus one strength on the charge. It gets nasty. And I am speaking from experience. It gets right nasty. Uh, relic to Iron Gob. So I like this relic. Uh, it's not the standout one, but there is a way you can make a, a mortal wound dealing machine with this relic. Um, so keep it in your back pocket, right? If you got that extra command point or whatever, and you want to go up against Harlequins with their three up in and saves or whatever foolishness they have. Custodies is another big one. Um, just basically, uh, after you've consol or after you've fought, but before you consolidate, select an enemy unit within one inch, and on a two plus D three mortal wounds. So, it bites you because he's got a big iron gob on him. So, 
moving over, we got the Bad Moons. Now, they've changed also quite a bit. Um, they aren't as good, but they also aren't the go-to for your shooting. Um, so we'll dive right into their uh, culture, arm to the teeth. So we'll add uh, six inches to the rain characteristic of heavy weapons or DACA and heavy weapons with models that this culture is equipped with. So that's stuff like your shooters now are DACA weapons. We'll get to that. Actually, it's explained after this, which I found is kind of weird, but it is explained what DACA weapons are. They're a new type of weapon just for orcs because we're special uh, and heavy guns. Um, so there's not a lot of heavy guns, but there are some and you will benefit from this. You'll get that extra range, right? And it definitely helps with DACA weapons because they get bonuses at half range. So if you have more range, your half range also extends. Uh, and each time a model makes a range attack on an unmodified wound roll of six, improve the armor penetration characters that attack by one. So you're not getting exploding shots anymore with attack, attack, attack. You're not getting reroll ones to hit. I think GW is really trying to crack down on the rerolls. Maybe they've failed in some other instances, uh, other codexes, but they're, they're certainly trying to rein it in. So you just get extra AP. It certainly helps on stuff like your rockets because you get more shots with them now too. So... It will, it will be, it, it, it's still good. Uh, best armor Teeth can buy four up invul and save on the Warlord and add one to their armor saving throws. Now this can stack with a relic and you can give a Bad Moons War Boss or Big Mech in Mega Armor a zero plus save. Uh, you will still fail on a roll of one because a roll of one always fails, but this will just help you ignore modifiers. So basically your invul doesn't kick in, I think, until neg five AP. So you're still rocking that two up save, three up save. It's definitely I'm making a tanky war boss out of that. Uh, showing off, it's changed as well. It's no longer shoot twice, but for one CP, you can give a goff or a goff correction, bad moons core or character unit. The old DACA rules, the old DACA, DACA, DACA. So unmodified roll of six scores an additional hit. And actually it's better because you're not rolling a second shot. You're just getting an extra hit. So just one CP use it on Ludas, right? It's flash gets, there's ways to, to bring back the old orc shooting, um, gob shot thunder bus. So it's just a, it's a big heavy flamer that shoots teeth because how else, how better could a bad moon flaunt his wealth by killing his enemies with orc money? That's fantastic. It's some poetic almost. <laughs> Uh, evil sons. So they've changed quite a bit as well. They no longer get the plus one to charge rolls, stuff like that, but you get, you still get the plus one to your movement. If your speed freaks, you add two instead, you add one to advance rolls made for the unit and models with this culture do not get the penalty for moving and firing assault weapons when they advanced still fast, still shooty. You're going to see a lot of good stuff out of the evil sons for sure. Uh, warlord trait. It's another good one faster than use. Um, so you're, uh, you, uh, select an evil son's core unit within six inches of the warlord. That unit is el eligible to declare a charge, even if they advanced or fell back this turn. So you don't have to rely on the wall to get your advance and charge. You can, um, get bonuses. If you, if your unit has a bonus to charge, you can fall back and then get that bonus again by charging, or you can just escape a combat and go charge into another one. Maybe the gets you fighting are too tough and you got to go pick on some weaker gets. You gotta do what you gotta do, man. Um, drive by DACA. So end of your shooting phase. Select the uh, speed freaks unit in your army. It can make a more normal move um, as if it were your movement phase after it shoots. That unit cannot charge again that turn. So it's almost like a, a shoot and scoot. You're basically driving by, cut, 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 and then keep on ripping down. Keep on racing. Big thing about the Evil Suns, though, Res Mecha's Redder Paint. This is infinitely better than it was last edition. Um... <laughs> you add two inches to the bearer's move characteristic because he's redder. Uh, and then at the end or at the start of the fight phase, you, uh, if you're with engagement range of any enemy units, none of those units can be selected to fight until all eligible units from your army have done so. Oh, that's fantastic. That is, that prevents all the fight back stratagems with the Marines and their shock assault and foolishness. It's, it's really good, but because of the way the clans work now, your warlord has to be evil sun. So you see where I'm, uh, there's, there's some balance. It's like, you want to take this really good relic. Well, that means you can't take the golf relic. That means you can't take the bad moons relic. It's, 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 it, um, it's pushing diversity, which is only a good thing. 
uh, snake bites, another big, big winner this, uh, this edition. So each time a, uh, attack is made against a unit with this culture, unless it has a strength of eight or more unmodified roll of one to three for that attack fails. So irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or the model making the attack may have. Now I read that as irrespective of any abilities. So that's irrespective of plus ones to wound as well. Um, it, it, so it basically, it means you're really, really tanky against things that are like similarly strengthed out to you. And it's not really overpowered. Cause I know a lot of people were complaining who weren't orc players were complaining. It's like, Oh, they got transhuman as an innate, innate trait. And you can only be wounded on fours. Well, yeah. I mean, but you think orcs are T five now or T six on some of their cavalry, stuff like that. So really that's only coming into effect on strength seven. It's like how many auto cannons are actually out there. And usually you're throwing your overcharge in your plasma because you, you're Imperium. You got rerolls for days. Um, and then as an, as an add on each time a squig model with its culture makes a melee attack, if they charged or heroically intervened this turn, add one to the attacks wound roll. So it makes your squigs better for the snake bites. They breed better squigs. And because their squigs are so feisty and bitey, they're tougher as a result. It's, it, it really does the snake bites justice finally, which is nice to see. Um, Surly as, as a squiggeth, good warlord trait, get back up if you die <laughs> on a four plus. It's can't be, can't, can't take that guy down. Mystic chanting, it's a deny strat. So maybe, I, I don't know if you're going for a poor the witch on your secondaries or something and you don't want a psyker in your army. You can still have a chance to deny something, right? Good. Brog's buzz bomb, it's a really fun grenade that kills you with bees, essentially. <laughs> Death skulls. Death skulls. So they were widely abused last edition because they were the, the, the towards the end of eighth uh, and the beginning of ninth before this book, they were the, uh, the auto take culture with every unit having rerolls for days, every unit having a six up invul and all the infantry being obsec. Well, they've changed that slightly and their, uh, their stratagem's gotten mildly worse as well. But this is what happens, right? I mean, you can't you can't take advantage of something for that long and expect it to be a uh, hunky dory after an update. So they're not bad by any means. I still really like the Death Skulls, uh, and they definitely have some play, but they just aren't what they were. And I think you couldn't you shouldn't have expected them to be what they were. So they still get uh, r- some rerolls. You can reroll one hit or wound roll when resolving an attack when the unit is selected to shoot or fight. Um, so instead, and instead of the six up feel no pain army wa- or six up invuln army wide, now you have a five up shrug to mortal wounds. That's that's still pretty good, especially when you combine it, start combining it with beast snagas because beast snagas have the innate six up invuln anyways. So you can actually make units that are tougher. Um, and then infantry units are still obsec, not grots because they don't get the clan culture right, but infantry units are still obsec. That's still fantastic. You got your mega knobs right. They're still holding down the, down the objective. Um, Really good stuff there. Opportunist. I like this one a lot. It's gotten better. Um, so the first part's more or less the same. So your warlord can target a character within 12, ignoring lookout, sir. So your warlord's a sniper. Um, and then on top of that, if a vehicle unit is destroyed, has to be en- enemy. But if an enemy vehicle is destroyed within 16 your warlord, you just gain a command point. Because, I don't know, he's looting some stuff. Maybe listening to the radio or something. That's, uh, yeah. I like Opportunist. Rekkas, uh, it's not the full reroll <laughs> wounds on vehicles that it used to be. Um, and now it's only core and characters, but you add one to the attacks wound roll. So it's still, it's still pretty good. Uh, and fixer uppers is, uh, the relic. It's more or less the same. Um, so it, er, on a two plus the vehicle, uh, regains an additional wound. Um, so that's actually, I'd, I'd say better instead of being flat three. Now it's D three plus one and you can combine that. I'm pretty sure with the, uh, the Grot Oilers. So now it's plus two. So you can regain, regen up to five wounds on a vehicle with that. And then, uh, then you can select one enemy vehicle within 12 inches of the bear. That enemy vehicle suffers D3 mortal wounds. I don't know, maybe he throws a spanner into their engine or something. <laughs> I still like the Death Skulls. Um, yeah, they're, they're just not what they were. Uh, blood Axes. So... Still also more or less the same. They just have better stuff over here. Uh, so range attack made against the unit uh, with this culture. If the attacker is more than 18 inches away, you get the benefit of light cover, even if you're out in the open. 
And then units with this culture are eligible, eligible to shoot or declare a charge, but not both in a turn in which they fell back. I enjoy the, uh, the blood axes. They got tactics, right? <laughs> um, but where they really start to shine, I think, is when you start looking at, I've got a plan, lads, and dead sneaky. So this is your warlord trait. Um, and it means your warlord has to be blood axes, but it, hey, it is what it is, right? Uh, by the end of the deploy forces step, select up to three blood axes unit from your army and redeploy them. If the mission uses strategic reserves, any of those units can be placed into strategic reserves without having to spend any additional command points, regardless of how many units are already in strategic reserve. If both players have abilities that redeploy units, roll off. Winner chooses who goes first. <sighs> I'm sorry, what? I can, I can have play Gestampo <laughs> for free? <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, now, the Stampa wouldn't be able to do it as part of a super heavy auxiliary debt. Because they don't get a clan culture. And it says that not in this book, but it does say it in the core rules under super heavy auxiliary detachment. It says this unit does not benefit from any detachment abilities. So it would have to be a full super heavy debt. So maybe take a couple of Gorkonauts or something, but up to three. You could deep, you could outflank three Gorkonauts or two Gorkonauts and a Stampa for free. I mean, good luck making a hole that big, but. Uh, you guys thought Creed was uh, crafty, hiding a bane blade behind a bush. I'll try hiding a stompa behind a stop sign. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then dead sneaky. Um, so you use it at the end of your movement phase if uh, you're using strategic reserves in your mission. Select one blood axe infantry unit from your army, excluding mega armor, that's within three inches of a battlefield edge. Place them in strategic reserves. So you can kind of just like back them up off your board edge and then bring them in on another board edge next turn within nine inches, maybe get a charge off some use there. Only one command point. But the, the big thing is I've got a plan lads. I, I definitely see a lot of janky, really fun, zany play with that one. Um, more Zog's thinking cap. It doesn't give you an extra warlord trade anymore. It just gives you a command point at the start of your command phase on a four plus. Not bad. And lastly, we have the freebooters. Uh, so they've seen some changes. Um, now, each time a freebooter unit from your army destroys an enemy unit after that unit's attacks have been resolved until the end of the phase, each time an attack is made by another freebooter's unit with this culture from your army, add one to the attack's hit roll. So, this is better than it was last edition. It really is. Um, it's our, it's bore, it's table wide now. All you have to do is kill one unit. It's not a 24 inch bubble. You don't have to worry about like getting all your stuff in certain kill zones. It's like, okay, I'm going to kill that thing. And then everything else is going to get plus one to hit. Fantastic. And it does stack. Now I say it stacks in the, in that you can, you can only stack negatives and positives up to plus or minus one for hit rolls. But that means that because this rule as it's written, stacks, it would, uh, pending any FAQs, obviously, if they had negatives to hit, say they were a flyer or Eldar or something, and they had negatives to hit, you could get plus two, so you'd still end up with the plus one, if that makes sense. I know it's confusing, but you can definitely keep the, uh, keep the buffs going, and you can keep your army hitting at plus one, which is very nice. Um, Warlord trait, killer reputation. Enemy within three inches, subtract one from leadership. So it's a leadership shenanigans. You can also buff your own leadership, which could be helpful. Because they're pretty scared of their pirate king. Uh, but the where it really shines between this and... This is where your shooty, I think, orc lists are going to gravitate towards as freebooters. Um, your get the loot stratagem and your bad skull banner. So get the loot, you pick a freebooters infantry unit, they get obsec. It doesn't, like, double obsec or anything like that, so, which is, I mean, you can't make boys count as 20 models for a 10-man squad. But you can still give your mega or your mega knobs obsec on an objective. You can give your burnas obsec, commandos obsec on an objective. And then, or a single character. Why would you do it on a single character? Uh, I can't really think of a way. A reason. Bad Skull Banna. Freebooters model only. Relic uh, can be taken by a vehicle model. I mean, you can. While enemy or while an enemy unit is within six inches of the bear, it loses obsec. Take your war boss, yeet him into melee on an objective against who knows or cares what your war boss, and they lose obsec. 
Peg one CP, your war boss gains it. He is a pirate king after all. That's his objective. Zog off. That's all I'll say about freebooters. I really like them. Uh, so moving on from clans, we have the specialist mobs. So I did say these changed. You no longer dedicate an entire detachment to them anymore, which is, I mean, you can no longer build your, your super specialized pyromaniac clans, but I, I do like what they've done with a lot of these. Now, you can only do this once per detachment in your army. They lose their clan keyword. They gain the specialist mob keyword that's associated with them. And it's only only the certain data sheets that are outlined or certain keywords that are outlined um, that you can do this to. It does note that you say your crusade force cannot start with any specialist mob units. You have to pay the uh, requisition in crusade. So we'll just go through the ones that I like the most. Um, I like pyromaniacs because uh, anytime you use a, uh, a flame orc type weapon, if you, when you're determining your, your attacks, you basically get blast for your flamers, which is fantastic, especially when you can take up to 12 flamers in a burn a squad. So, um, if you roll any of those dice is less than three attacks, you make three attacks instead. Uh, so you can really rack up the auto hits with your rear flamer weapons. Big Krumpas. I really like this one as well. Uh, so it's your death dredge, your Gorkonauts, your mega armored knobs, mega armored character or Morkonauts. They get the following ability, Crumpin' Time. Each time Big Crumpus model makes a melee attack, add one to the hit roll. So this negates your minus one to hit with power claws on your Mega Knobs. This makes your Death Dreads hit on twos. And you can take it on a unit, a full unit, and Death Dreads can still be bought and split up as units. So now you have three Death Dreads hitting on twos with all their attacks. It's a good time. It's a really good time. And lastly, the one everyone's losing their minds about is Truck Boys. So... Uh, this one needs an FAQ. Um, not that it's overpowered and stuff and needs to go away, but that the wording needs to be clarified on it. So you can do it on boys, knobs, or war boss models only or units only. They gain the truck boys keyword. Truck boys units can be disembarked from a truck, even if that truck has made a normal move that phase, can't advance. Um, while any truck boys are embarked upon this truck, each time that truck makes a ranged attack, add one to the hit roll. So... The, the broken part about this rule is that uh, they lose their clan keyword and trucks can only transport clan infantry. Now, this is a huge rules as intended mishap because um, obviously they don't mean for you to play it that they can't embark on the truck. That's the entire rule um, <laughs> is they disembark from a truck and they get to after it moves. Trucks have fantastic movement. They have 12, 13 if you're evil sons, up to 14 or 15 in some cases if you're using a certain custom job. And then to be able to disembark from that and then potentially charge out of that, maybe advance and charge out of it if the wall has been activated that turn, it's nasty. It's nasty. You're looking at turn one charges. You're looking at guaranteed turn two charges with your big ugly units of mega knobs, knobs with big choppas, even regular boys because they spit out a ton of attacks now with their choppas and all that. Not that they got any more, but they've always spit out a ton of attacks, and now they're in a negative one, so it's just, it's it's really good. Uh, truck boys. You're going to see these in almost every list, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Um, and if you're if you're playing with the book pre-FAQ and they haven't fixed this yet, just, just ask your opponent if he's cool with it. If he's not, if he says, oh, rules is written or bust, I mean, maybe you shouldn't be playing them. Uh, if it's a tournament and you have no choice... Clarify with the tournament organizers beforehand. Um, make sure that you actually get clarification. That way, if someone tries to tries to grief you, you can be like, "Nope." You pull out your uh, your laminated card from the organizers. You get out a jail free card. Uh, um, and lastly, I'll just briefly mention Orable Gits. It's a way to give uh, Grotz Obsec. I mean, if you're bringing patrols and you're going speed freaks heavy, okay. Otherwise, I mean, there's so many better options. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Grotz are dead. They're trash. And moving over, we got custom jobs. So custom jobs took a huge hit because they were also quite abused. Um, I, You weren't fooling anyone. I see all you corkscrew, scrapjet players. I was one myself. Uh, so they, uh, yeah, it's it's rough. Uh, there are a few standouts though, so we'll get into those. Uh, actually first, so specialist mob cannot have custom jobs. So if you gave a unit a specialist mob on the last page, you're not giving them a custom job on this page. It can only be taken on units that include one model for vehicles or 
you take them on a spanner in a uh, under the mech custom jobs. But yeah, you can't run three def dreads with the same custom job anymore. You can't run triple scrap jet, triple buggy with the same custom job anymore. So that's the first big nerf they took. And then the other one is they actually gutted and like took a bit, took away one, a bunch of the standouts. Um, Crusade force cannot start with custom jobs. That is a requisition. You pay for that in glorious scrap points. We'll touch on that briefly. Um, and then you also add the, from the chart here, you add to your power and your points level of your unit where there is a dash between the two, um, between the two values. It's basically between whether or not you have a, Lord of War or a regular unit. So you will have, if you take more DACA on a Stompa, you're adding 30 points to the Stompa, not 15. So other than that, yeah, we'll get into it. Um, Nitro Squigs, fantastic. Uh, Rock Truck Squig Buggies, they're looking pretty hot now. Uh, and this adds one to the wound roll with the Squig Launcher. Squig Launcher got... Got cut down a bit. I mean, it's better, I think. There's no, like, triple profile anymore. It's just it's a flat profile. And now you add one of the wound roll from your nitro squigs. Excellent upgrade. If you're bringing any squig buggies, I would always take at least one in its own unit to give it nitro squigs. Make the points for it. They're cheap now. Um, squig high tires. Add one to the movement characteristic of this model. Each time it advances, add an additional two to its movement characteristic. So you're making truck, you took truck boys, you filled a truck full of mega knobs and they're raring to go. Now you gave a plus one to your movement, plus, plus two to your advance roll. Just making it quick, right? Souped up special, really, uh, really pumping out that DACA on the, uh, the mech special for your boom DACA snaz wagon. And then, I mean, I'm going to touch on it to Booma. Look how they massacred my boy. Um, so, you can only replace a wagon with a kill cannon. Uh, it's basically the same. 36 inch range, 2d6 damage, strength 8, neg 2, 2 damage. Or 36, or heavy 2d6 shots, strength 8, neg 2, 2 damage. It hurts um, because the gun wagon got gimped um, and you can't do 46 shots anymore. You can't give it reroll full hits with the Evil Sun Psychic Power anymore. But it's a sad day for the boomer. Uh, and then mech custom jobs. You give these to a mech. Um, or a spanner in a unit. So certain ones are only available on certain other ones, I guess. And it does say unit that contains a spanner, unit that contains a spanner, model equipped with a custom Mega Slugger or custom Mega Blasta. You cannot take the custom extra custom weapon on a Def Dread with four custom Mega Blastas. That's not cool. It's a mech custom job. You can only do it to a mech. There, I said it. <laughs> I see all you people in the forums being like, oh, look at all this. No, no, don't do it. Bad. Uh, enhanced rust, rust, runt sucker. I hope this is a typo because going from paying 15 points, I think it is. Yeah. 15 points for the enhanced rust, runt sucker. I paying 15 points to change it from D six shots to two D three shots. I don't know. I don't know. It's not. No. <laughs> I mean the, uh, the, the shock attack guns expensive as it is. I'm not going to make it more expensive to get, maybe one more shot out of it. Now, if they change it to 2d6, now you're onto something. Now you're, now your shock attack guns actually looking pretty tasty. Uh, so yeah, moving on from custom jobs, we have our stratagems and there's a lot of hate for the orc stratagems. There's a lot of hate and I don't quite get it. I'm sorry. Your death still your death star night killer combos are gone. Guaranteed night of turn. The game's moving away from that. Get with the times, boys. Come on. You got to improvise, adapt, overcome. So some of these, it, it hurts, right? But it's it's the way the game's moving, and this is this is all for a healthier game. And uh, just look at it this way. We're not getting hit with a nerf bat. Um, so favorite name stratagem of all time, Kareen or Karen. It's the Karen stratagem. Uh <laughs> So basically this has replaced, um, fly iron, flying headbutt, or, uh, the, the one that all the burn a bomber players abused last edition. Um, so basically if a vehicle explodes, an orc vehicle explodes and it's not an engagement range, you can pay the CP to move it six inches and then have it explode. You can go character sniping with this stuff like that. Uh, it's one for most vehicles, or if it's Titanic and a wagon or a wagon, it costs two CP because those are the D six mortal wounds. Those are the ones that it's. 
you could nuke a character. But yeah, you can either save your boys from imminent explosive demise, or you can maybe try to snipe at a character with that extra six inches on your explosion. It's not not bad, not bad. Um, and most hilariously named strategy in the game. Uh, classics like Ramming Speed are still kicking around. Get Stuck In Lads has changed. It's no longer fight twice. It's now an extra three inches to your consolidation or uh, pylon. So it helps you tie down models better, force them to use that desperate breakout stratagem, stuff like that. Just tie up the gun lines. It's not bad. Uh, gun Crazy Show-Offs, instead of being a baked-in rule to the uh, flash kits, it's now a two-command point stratagem. I don't think anyone will ever use that. Um, but you could if you love your flash kits. Hit them harder. Mega Knobs, instead of one CP, it's two CP now, but add plus one of their damage. Good. Tough as Squig Hide. This is this is the, the money maker here. You can basically give transhuman to any beast snaggy unit, uh, infantry, cavalry, or monster. Um, so if your snake bites and they're shooting you with strength eight or above weaponry, you can still pop this. Now you're still only winning me on a four. If you're not snake bites and you want to feel like a snake bite, pop this. They're only wounding you on a four. Fantastic stratagem because those units want to be in melee, and once they're in melee, they do the damage. Breaking heads. I, I know I've talked about all these guys, but these ones I, I kind of need to. A lot of people sour about this one. Um, how it, it used to be a baked-in rule, and now they force you to pay two command points to do it. It's the same as it was. Uh, if you fail a morale check within uh, six inches uh, of a war boss, or no, three inches. It is three inches still. You suffer D3 mortal wounds and then consider have it passed. Now, the book is forcing us away from big mobs, I feel. Uh, no longer no, no longer are the days of 30-man boy mobs. You don't get the additional plus one attack for being in a giant mob anymore. Morale hurts you. Blast hurts you. Breaking heads is now stratagem. But, that being said, I have used currently or recently breaking heads in combination with the insane bravery stratagem. I spent four command points, but that saved me. That won me the game. Um... Just quick aside, I uh, I ended up getting six secondary points from it, and I ended up getting the extra ten primary points from that. So it has a use. It's just, I, I know, it sucks that it's a strat now, but it still has a use. Um, bigger they is, excellent. You have your Beast Snaga boss going up against Mortarian. Add two to the damage roll. So, oh, it's minus one damage. Well, now it's still plus two, or it's still plus one to the damage roll. So it, it's... It helps your uh, your big beast snagger guys or your big beast snagger bosses take down the biggest beasts. Fantastic! Extra Govins big boss, your extra war le- or your extra war gear, your extra warlord trait stratagem. Staple, tide of muscle, fantastic. Pay one CP for an orc core unit to ignore any modifiers to the charge range. Charge and repulsor, nah, mate, I got this. Charge into a crater, nah, mate, I got this. You with the with the year we go, we still have that. Um, with with year we go, that's that's a that's a game changer right there. Love Tide of Muscle, probably one of my favorite stratagems in the book. Unstoppable momentum. That's uh, your knob on smash a squig. If he kills something on the charge with mortal wounds, he can charge again for one CP. Tie more things down. Teleport is still kicking around. Grot shields, pass. <laughs> Don't do the Makari foolishness with Grot shields. Um, don't be that guy. It's going to get FAQ'd out. You know it is. It was never intended that way. Don't use it. Um, for that purpose. Uh, teleport, yep, same as before. Lumbering strides. So they've changed here we go. It's no longer reroll any or all charge dice. It's reroll your charge. So you can't cherry pick the best dice. But lumbering strides lets you cherry pick the best dice for a Morkanot, Gorkanot, or Stompa. The ones you want to be in melee with, with their massive damage weapons. Nine damage Stompa. So yeah, so Monster Hunter Stratagem, uh, this is another excellent one, carried over from the old Snake Bites, but it's only gotten better. One less command point, so it's two command points. Pick one enemy monster or vehicle unit and up to three B snaggy units for your army. Each time a model is, uh, an attack is made, it doesn't even have to be melee, it can be ranged, don't know why it would be, but each time an attack is made, against that selected vehicle or monster, add one to the wound roll. You're using, like, nomadic tribesmen, like the hunters are encircling their prey and taking it down from multiple angles. That's that's really cool. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Cut in flames, one CV, basically give Burnas the rule they had last edition, 
um, make them neg two in melee. Okay. Uh, tank bust a bomb. So tank busters are no longer war gear. They just have certain units have the tank bust a bombs keyword. And then you pick a vehicle. Uh, you make one attack against it in melee. If it hits, 2d3 mortal wounds. Not bad. I'm not going to complain. Sometimes it just has to die. Snag a grapple. Another fantastic stratagem. Be snag a boys. So it has to be the unit. Be snag a boys. Pay two CP. If they want to fall back, you roll a dice on a four plus. They're not falling back. They're stuck with you. They dug the meat hooks in and you ain't getting away. Uh, ground shaker shells. Kind of like uh, tremor shells for uh, for the the thud gun that the Marines have. What is it? Thunderfire cannon. That one. Similar. Um, just uh, nerf some movement. Force field booster. So force fields. No longer the five up involm that we always loved. Um, and no longer do they go to the transport that the model is riding in. So you better have them on the field or no one's getting it. But now it is a six inch range. It affects every unit it touches, not wholly within. And it's a six up involm in shooting and melee. This for two command points at the beginning of your opponent's shooting phase bumps it back up to the original nine inches. Not wholly within, but it's still an 18 inch bubble around this this uh, model and it gives you your old five up back so if you're going second against some of these tricked out daca lists that people like to bring because that's fun you can still pop this you can cover a huge swath of your army you can get the five up invuln that you used to love you just can't use the custom force field again for the rest of the game it fizzles out he overcharges it but it could save your game uh keep it in your back pocket don't maybe don't build around it but keep it in your back pocket all right, that's it for stratagems. Um, if you want to see the rest, you can read them yourself. But uh, there's the stratagems. They're they're less auto takes, and now they're uh, now they're a toolbox. You better know your stratagems. You better know all of them, and you better know when to play them because they're all niche and they're all waiting for that certain moment. And then you pop it, and then boom, it saves your arse. <laughs> uh, Warlord traits. So. I'll uh, I'll pick I'll pick two from the uh, the orcs warlord traits one from the beast snaggers one from the speed freaks the ones that stand out to me the most. So we have uh, for the regular orc warlord traits we have brutal but cunning. So it's no longer what it used to be, but now it's each it's it's wordsy. So bear with me. Each time this warlord fights, if all of its attacks target one enemy unit, after resolving all of those attacks, it can make a number of additional attacks against that enemy unit equal to the number of attacks that did not reach the inflict damage step of the attack sequence during that fight. <sighs> no confusion there. Um, basically, what it means is everything that doesn't end up doing damage, you can re-roll that attack. It, it's a very fancy way of saying that. So if you miss one and you fail to wound with the other at the end of it, you can re-roll those two. So, and from what I read, it, it still affects the goth snow muck and about. So if you have exploding attacks and they don't make it to the end, you still roll for them. So it's, it's good <laughs> once you wrap your head around it. And then uh, follow me, lads, is another good one I like. It basically, if your warlord makes the charge, he's leading from the front. He is the war boss. He gets to be the first one to stick his boots in. Um, if he makes a charge and then... Uh, Uh, if you if another orc clan unit declares a charge against an enemy unit that's within the engagement range of the warlord, add one to the charge roll. Bonuses to charge are also always a great thing, especially with orcs. And your warlord might have to eat some Overwatch, but it is what it is. They're tough now. They're tougher now, so it's good. It's good. Uh, Beast snag warlord traits. Uh, big killer boss is the one that stands out as the killiest, uh, and then. Uh, Beast Gob is for you if you want to buff your Squig Cavalry. Um, but Big Kill a Boss is each time he fights within engagement range of a vehicle or a monster, add two to his attacks characteristic. Each time he makes a melee attack against a vehicle or a monster, add one to the attacks wound roll. So makes him a Big Kill a Boss. <laughs> and Speed Freaks. So uh, I like Junk Boss. It gives you the four up invuln save. The Death Kill War Trike is pretty flimsy. Um, as far as buggies go, so the, giving it the four up involves tasty. Uh, you could also make an argument for road killer doing D three mortal wounds on the charge is, is nice. Um, so 
pick what you like. Uh, psychic powers. So I'll pick, uh, well, there's four from the uh, Power of the Wall discipline that really stand out to me. Warpath, uh, it's still what it used to be. Add one of the attacks characters to the unit, charge targeting core character. The jump. Everyone likes the jump. Fists of Gork, same as it was. Add two to the strength and attack characteristics of a friendly character. But if you, now, if you roll an 11 or more, you add three instead. So plus three strength, plus three attacks. Fists of Gork, indeed. And then Jab and Fingers, I actually also really like. Um, because if you manifest it, uh, minus one to hit rolls for the attack from that unit. That's fighting and melee. So uh, maybe you're scared of some retribution. Maybe you don't think your boys are going to finish the job. Well, maybe do the jab and fingers and uh, save them some grief. Uh, and that's for weird boys. Now, beast head discipline is now for your were boys and your kill rigs, which have a were tower on top of them. Um, there's three really good ones here. I love them. Uh, Spirit of Gork is the big buff to your squigs. So each time the unit fights, it can make an additional attack with either its Big Chompa's Jaws, Squig Hog Jaws, Massive Squig Jaws, or Squigasaur Jaws. So plus one attack for your squig calf. And in addition, each time it makes an attack with your squig calves or squig calves jaws, uh, you inf on a uh, unmodified wound roll of six, you inflict one mortal wound in addition uh, to your normal damage. So the cavalry actually have a lot of attacks coming out and now adding mortal wounds into the mix. It's very tasty. Um, Roar of Mork. Select one enemy unit within 18 inches, subtract two from advance and charge rolls, and then a minor leadership debuff. Now the minus two to advance and charge rolls, that means that you're charging potentially and not them. Uh, you always, ABC, always be charging. That is the that is an orc motto. Um, Roar of Mork helps that. And then Frazzle. Oh boy, Frazzle. It has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, roll a d6 for every enemy unit within 9 inches of the Psyker on a 4 plus d3 mortal wounds. I don't know about you guys, but that kill rig looks like it's on a night base. There's a lot of units you can fit within 9 inches of a night base. Charge that thing into melee and just pop off that power and whoo boy, there you go. Give them the old frazzle dazzle. Uh, so moving on, we got the relics. Uh, so we only have these relics, I mean, plus the other ones that we covered on the... Uh, the clans, um, there are two that really, or three that really stand out to me. Um, the first one is the beast hide mantle. So add one to the bear. It's beast snag only, not vehicles. You cannot, it says it right here, not vehicles. You cannot put the beast, <laughs> beast hide mantle on the kill rig. Add one to its tax characteristic. Each time it loses a wound, five up shrug. That's why you can't put it on the kill rig. <laughs> um, scorch get bones. Add one of the Psychic Cast for Witch Fire Powers. Eh. But Perils of the Warp, 4-Up Shrug. Demon players, eat your heart out. Pop that stratagem if you want. I'll probably live. Uh, Head Whopper's Kill Choppa is great now. Times 2 Strength, Neg 3, Damage 2, Mortal Wounds on 6s to Wound in addition. Great stuff. And lastly, uh, just to go back to the Bad Moons, the way you get the 0-Up save, you stack it with the Warlord trait Best Armor Teeth can buy with Crushing Armor. 4-up invuln save, which is redundant. Add 1 to armor saving throws. So now he's got a 0-up save in mega armor, technically. Um, after the bear makes a charge move, you can select one enemy unit within 1 inch of it and roll a d6 on a 2+, plus d3 mortal wounds. Not bad, not bad. The uh, the new mega armor war boss looks sweet. Make him bad moons, give him a 0-up save. Nice. So... We got chapter approved rules here. Um, this is basically your secondaries for matched play. Now, you get four. They each have their own um, No Mercy, No Mercy, Purge the Enemy, Battlefield Supremacy, Shadow Ops. Two of these, I think, are fantastic. One of these, it's okay. I mean, if you're like, if you're min maxing your units and there's a guard player min maxing his units and you're crumping them in melee, stomp him good. I, that's. That's what I think about that one. Um, Green Tide, it's a better, well, it's a better engage on all fronts, but it requires orc units being 11 or more models, which we've already discussed the rest of the book is almost trying to move you away from. So I'd almost scrap Green Tide entirely, unless you love playing 30-man blobs, and then, well, there you are. Uh, but... Now, these are also very situational, but when you can get them, I think they are fantastic. We have biggest and best. You can only take this by your, or you can only kill or score points through your warlord. 
Now, you score three victory points at the end of each battle round for each of the following achieved by your Orc Warlord to a maximum of five points. So that's five points per battle round. So if you get two of them, you don't get six. You get five kind of thing, right? But if you do one, you get still get the three. Um, and then, so three points if an enemy monster or vehicle unit is destroyed as the result of a melee attack. Three victory points if an enemy character is destroyed as the result of a melee attack. Three victory points if five or more enemy models were destroyed as the result of attacks made by this warlord. Gazkull. <laughs> Gazkull's really good at this. Because once he hits melee, he's good for at least three points a turn. Maybe five. Because it's battle round, right? So it's your turn and their turn. Gaz is real good at that one. Um, and then we have get to good bits. Ah, Mozrog might be good at it too. But think about that one when you take Gaz. Uh, get to good bits. Shadow Ops. This one's a little bit convoluted, but on certain deployment maps, you can win the game with this. <laughs> um, if you selected the secondary objective after both sides have finished deploying, starting with your opponent, the players alternate selecting objective markers that are not within any player's deployment zone to be the good bits objective markers until three objective markers have been selected. If there's only one such objective marker, then only that objective marker is a good bits objective marker. Same with two, I would assume, but they just specified three and one. Uh, orcs core units from your army can attempt the following action. So any core units um, get the good bits action at the end of your movement phase so you can advance onto it and do stuff like this. One or more orcs core units from your army can start to perform this action. Each unit from your army that starts to perform this action must be in range of a different good bits objective marker. So you can get all three of them in one turn if you want, or can. You can try. <laughs> a unit cannot start this action when there are any enemy units excluding aircraft in range of the objective marker. Now, they can, they can finish the action, action if there's units within range. They just can't start it. This action is completed by the end of your next command phase, so you have to you do the whole of your turn and the whole of their turn. Provided that the unit attempting that action is still within range of the good bits objective marker. Score three victory points. But if you get first turn, you get on those objective markers, and they can't kill you off them, that's nine potential victory points. Turn one. Or, well, it'd be your turn two. Get the good bits. I rate this very, very highly. But, again, certain deployment maps, you can't... They're, they're, I don't think they're trying to have secondaries be, oh, I built my list to take this, this, and this secondary, and I'm going to take it every single game, and I'm going to win every single game because I took these secondaries. No. Play smart. Look at your opponent. Look at their army. Look at the deployment map. Choose your secondaries based on that. Keep these two in your back pocket. They'll do really well for you. Uh, crusade rules. Favorite part of the book. I love the Orc Crusade rules. Um... I, I could do a whole other video on these, uh, so we're going to go through this very quickly. Um, you get scrap points for killing vehicles, so you can build custom jobs for your guys based off vehicles you kill in your campaigns. Um, there's the wa the might, might, might makes right. You have a wa boss, so he leads your army, but if you have another character who surpasses him in power level or victory or renown, they challenge him and they duke it out, and the winner becomes the new wa boss. <laughs> it's so cool um we have the agendas they're okay uh like requisitions use fight for me now if your crusade force plays another or crusade force and you win you spend one rp and then you immediately get five experience points for your warlord and you purchase the refresh recruits requisition you crumped that war boss your war boss got bigger because might is right, and you stole some of his lads. <laughs> Requisitions. Use fight for me now. Fantastic. Uh, the battle traits are good. You got swig, cav, mech, or big mech units, pain boy units, mob units. Mob units are your typical orc mobs. So your your boys, your beast snagger boys, your storm boys, your knobs. The scrap system, how it works. So you spend scrap points in addition to requisition points. You can either fix your vehicles, heal them for scrap points, or give them custom jobs. <sighs> crusade Relics. The souped-up Shaka has made a return, but it's in Crusade now, so your opponents won't be super salty about it. The Choppa of the Great Wa lets you wa every single turn, and it's times three strength for three damage. <laughs> oh, I love the Orc Crusade. Crusade is just Humi for wa. Change my mind. 
<laughs> Showcase Crusade Army. Guy's been in the hobby for years. Has 8,000 points of pure goffs. My man. Love it. Data sheets. Okay. So we're in the data sheets. Um, the clan keyword. DACA weapons. It explains DACA weapons. So the first value is that if the target's within half range of the weapon, that's how many shots you get. If the target's not within half range of the weapon, you use the second value. So more shots the closer you are. DACA, DACA, DACA. Here we go. Reroll charges. Ramshackle has changed and got better. Uh, it affects way more vehicles now. And if your strength characteristic of less than eight, you subtract one from the damage characteristic. That's on almost every single orc vehicle now. I think except for our Titanic units. So it's really going to stop those sisters players from spamming heavy bolters and shipping away two damage a turn or two damage a shot. Ramshackle's really good. Mob rule, it hurts. Um, but this is what I'm saying. The book's forcing you away from those maximum sized mobs. Beast Snaga, everything that has the Beast Snaga keyword adds one to the attack's hit roll against monster or vehicle units. That's shooting and melee. And then you also have a six up built in or built in six up invuln. The Waw. They finally brought back the wall. You have to call it. Sure, it's not really tactical. You're always going to call it turn two or speed wall. You're always going to call it turn one, blah, blah, blah. The fact is, I get to yell wall at my opponent, and that's a big win for me. So uh, you stage one, call the wall. So for that turn, it affects it, and then it carries on for another turn. It's not as powerful, but you still get two whole turns of it. Gazkull, because he is the prophet of Gork and Mork, he can call both a wall and a speed wall. Speed wall is only for speed bosses, which is currently only the Death Killer War Trike. Now, it might be the not, or the war boss on bike in the Forge World Compendium when that gets updated. That remains to be seen. Wa is every other war boss character, and the war boss has to be your warlord. You're not having no runty mech be your warlord and calling Waz. It has to be a proper boss. So, love the concept of it, and if we're at an event together, you'll be able to hear me yelling Wa across the thing, I promise you. Um... Now we're into the data sheets. So sweeping changes, absolutely sweeping changes. Um, most of it you've seen on the community page. And if not, it's like, okay, mech's got plus one ballistic skill. They hit on fours now. Beast snaggas, they've all been previewed in, I think, pretty much because that's the big selling push. Um, lots of good stuff in here. War bosses got the five up invuln save built in now. Everything pretty much got the plus one toughness. So you're looking at T5 army wide. That's that's good. Um, one other big change is the War Boy and the Weird Boy. They no longer only know one power. They know two powers, even if they can only cast one, because their their buff from being near extra boys lets them cast an additional power. So even if you don't plan on jumping around, my suggestion and what I will probably always do is I will take the jump in addition to the main power because just the threat of having it is going to make your opponent deploy differently. It's like you're already getting in their head, right? So that's really it, guys. Um, that's the orc book in a nutshell. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. <laughs> and, I mean, I hope you guys can get your hands on some or one or if you haven't already, I hope you get your hands on one soon. Thanks, guys. Oh, you get crump that subscribe button for more Oki content. I love the the beast niggas. They got like rocket propelled sticks on squig hogs, it's like pig squigs, pig squigs, squig squiggly pigs, squiglets. That's that's the bomb squig. It's a squiglet. <laughs> it's got the grot with the nail on it.